Okay, you are entering the home stretch. This is course three, class one, homework assignment number one. Uh, question one asks us, what is the area in square feet of triangle ABC, triangle ABC, and we're going to use uh, Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Uh, here it's given us A and it's given us C. What we don't have is B. We do not know the value of B. But if we were to write out the equation, we get 7 squared plus B squared equals 25 squared. Uh, if we solve this algebraically, we can move the 7 squared, take away 7 squared from this side, and take away 7 squared from this side. We end up with b squared equals 25 squared minus 7 squared. Continuing to solve that, um, we would get b squared equals 625 minus 49, or b squared equals 576. b equals the square root of 576. Again, use your calculator there, and you find out that the square root of 576 is 24. Now you go back to the find the area. It's one half the base times the height. One half the base times the height. In this case, we see that the base of the triangle is seven feet, and the height we just solved to be 24. So one half times seven times 24. And you multiply these first in your calculator. Seven times 24 is 168. So you have 168, and then divide, oops, sorry, divide that by 2, and you get 84 square feet. The correct answer is B. Question 2 says triangle DEF, triangle DEF is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. We obviously we see the 90 and the 60, so that we know that this is the 30 here. And the length of segment FE is 5 feet. Wants to want us to find the perimeter of the triangle to the nearest foot. The perimeter of triangle DEF to the nearest foot. Well, because we know this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, we also know that if this side is X, then the other leg has to be x times the square root of 3, and that the hypotenuse is going to be twice the length of x, 2x. Now we can use a Pythagorean, or we actually don't need Pythagorean theorem because all we're doing is finding the perimeter. So we're going to add 5 plus 5 times the square root of 3. See, we knew that x was 5, so we plug that in here, and the same thing here, 2 times 5 is 10, so this was x, and it became it stayed 5, this was x times the square root of 3, so that became 5 times the square root of 3, and this was 2 times x, and that became 10. So when you combine the like terms, you get 15 plus 5, the square root of 3, and they want you to solve for this. And 5 times the square root of 3 is 8.66 plus 15 gives us 23.66. And when we round that, we end up with 24. The correct answer is G. In question number three, we see the octagon below uh, has adjacent sides, and they all meet at right angles. And segment AH is nine feet, that's here, and segment GF is 18 feet here. 
what is the perimeter of the figure in feet? The thing you need to keep in mind is whether this octagon goes this way and then up, or whether it goes up and then over. It's because everything's meeting at right angles, it's still covering the same distance. So this nine foot this nine foot rise right here could really be all the way out here to the side. Uh, so you're going up a total of 27 feet high on this side, which means to get from the same starting point on this side to the same ending height on this side, this is also going to be 27 feet high. And that also means that whether you slide over this way and then go up and then slide over and then slide over, the total distance that's covered across the top of that octagon is the exact same as the 25 feet here. So you've got 25 feet on the bottom plus 25 feet on the top. 50 and 54 is 104. And let's just see, the correct answer is B, 104 feet. Okay, there are a whole lot of words in this question number four here. In the figure below, F, E, D, uh, and A are collinear. So they all appear along this line here. There's a little F, E, D, A. They're all on the same line. If angle F, E, B is 120 degrees, here's 120. And if E, B, D is 41, and the angle for B, A, D is 59, what is the degree measure of angle A, B, D? So what we're really trying to figure out is to measure this angle right here. Now because all of these angles appear on a line like this, we know something. We know that of this 120 degrees across this straight line, 120 degrees comes from this angle, leaving, uh, we need something to get up to 180 degrees, and so that's going to make 60 degrees here. And now since we know that the measure of that angle is 60 degrees, we know uh, 60 plus 41 is 101, and you're going to take away 101 from 180 because this entire triangle here has to equal 180 degrees. So that makes the measure of angle EDB 79 degrees, and if that's 79 degrees, then we know that the measure of this angle right here has to be 180 minus 79 degrees, which means it's got to equal 101 degrees. So now that we know that this is 101 and this angle here is 59, 101 plus 59 is 160 degrees, which means that what's left over out of this triangle here is 180 minus 160. The measure of angle ABD must equal ABD must equal 20 degrees. Correct answer is H. In question five, we are told that segments AC and BD are diameters of circle O and that they are 16 inches long. What is the area of triangle AOE? So what we're really trying to do is find the area of this little triangle right here. Well, in order to find the area, we need to find the lengths of the sides so we can do one half the base times the height. And we know that AC is a diameter that equals 16 inches long, which means AO, this segment right here, must be eight inches. And because this is a right triangle here, we know that um, the, the length of these two sides must be the same. So we can use Pythagorean theorem. We don't know what the lengths are, but we know that they must be the same. So we can use Pythagorean theorem to say some measure squared plus that exact same measure squared must equal 8 squared. And if that's the case, then what we get is 2x squared equals 8 times 8 is 64, which means that x squared equals, um, if 2x squared equals 64, then 1x squared must equal 32. And so therefore, x, if x squared equals 32, then x must equal the square root of 32. But we're not finished there. 
because all we did now is just find out the measure of this uh, line, which is the square root of 32. And now we need to do 1 half the base times the height. So we have to do 1 half the square root of 32 times the height. And the height is going to be the exact same because these two sides are the same times the square root of 32. Well, if you're clever, what you're going to see is the square root of 32 times the square root of 32 is like 1 half uh, 32, the square root of 32 squared, or 1 half of 32, which equals 16. The correct answer is A, 16. Question 6 says the bases of the isosceles trapezoid are shown below are 18 centimeters. Can you make sure you can see it? This is 18 centimeters and 28 centimeters. And what they want to know is what is the distance in centimeters between these two parallel sides? So what is the distance between these two parallel sides right here? That's the distance we're trying to solve for. Well, if you look at that, that's also going to be the height of one of these imaginary triangles down here. If only we knew the base of this triangle, we have the base, um, we have one of the sides, and we, we don't know this side, but we do know this side over here uh, to be 13 centimeters. So all we need to do is find the measure of this side right here. Well, it's really, if you think about it, you drop these two sides down right here, 28 minus 18. This bottom is 10 centimeters longer than the top, and you split that evenly between the two sides, you get a measure here of 5. So now it's 5 squared, using Pythagorean theorem, 5 squared plus some measure squared equals 13 squared. Now if I subtract 5 squared from both sides, I'm left with x squared equals 13 squared is 169, 169 minus 5 squared is 25, so x squared equals 144, or then x equals the square root of 144, which is 12. So the measure of this side right here is 12, that side right there is 12, uh, centimeters, and the correct answer is J. Okay, the figure below is a regular hexagon, so it's got uh, six congruent sides and angles. Two sides of the hexagon are extended to intersect at an external point E. It wants to know what is the measure of angle BED, BED. So what we're trying to do is solve for the measure of this angle right here. Uh, you can use the formula 180 times n minus 2 all over n to find the measure of the angles inside the hexagon. In this case, n is the total sides, which is 6. So this would be 180 times 6 minus 2 is 4 divided by 6 equals 720 divided by 6, which is 120. So the measure of the angles here are 120. This is 120, which means the measure on the angle of the other side of that line is 60. And this one also has to be 60. So if this one's 60 and this one's 60, the last angle to add up to 180 degrees also has to be 60. The correct answer is C. Uh, once again, congratulate yourself. You did a good job. These problems were a little bit harder, so there weren't as many of them. That is the end of homework assignment, course one, class one, homework assignment number one. Good job.